I'm going to take a 555 circuit, send it into a binary counter and some NAND gates to observe how the oscillator can create different patterns of on-off pulses. And then I want to expand it by connecting it into a 16 by 16 matrix so I can automate switching various pulses around, create more complex waveforms, and make some sound effects. This is the basic circuit. I have 5 volts coming from a power supply to the breadboard. I have 3 LEDs with current limit resistors ready to be hooked up. Over here there's a resistor and capacitor for later. And there's a 1 meg potentiometer connecting to pins on this board. That's part of the 555 oscillator to control the rate. Then we have a couple of quad NAND gate 4011 chips and a 4040 binary counter with all kinds of pins available on breadboard friendly headers so we can configure things the way we want. So on the PCB, the way I wired up the NAND gates, I made it obvious what's going on. These are all separate circuit blocks really. So the 555 has an output here that I can jumper wherever I want. There's access to pin 5, the control voltage on the 555, so I can use that to modify the frequency aside from setting it with the potentiometer. And by default, there's no oscillator until we have an off-board resistor, which is the potentiometer, to complete the 555 circuit. So that gives it more adjustability, including if I want a digital pot. The 4040 binary counter has its clock input over here, so eventually I would take whatever clock source I want, clock the binary counter, and then we have outputs Q0 through Q11, as well as a reset. So we can take the oscillator, clock the counter. We have different new clock rates going gradually slower. We take those, put them into NAND gates, generate new interesting combinations of signals. Eventually, if we put this on an amplifier and a speaker, we can generate weird sound effects. So using this board, I'm not committed to a specific configuration, and it allows better experimenting. I made this board with today's sponsor, PCB Way. So the schematic is hard to follow, that's why I was looking at the circuit board itself, but here's the 555 circuit, and normally you would have a resistor as part of the oscillator frequency setting, but I'm bringing that down to the header pins to put the external pot. Otherwise we have the control voltage pin, and the output pin for the oscillator output going to the header. Those NAND gates just have their inputs and outputs on headers wherever they fit. And the binary counter, likewise, any of its control inputs, clock, reset, and all those Q outputs are just going to the headers. So it's really three different circuits on the one board, and we can hook this up however we want whether it's to blink lights or control some other digital circuit or generate sound effects. So right now I have 5 volts applied. The potentiometer is hooked up to the 555, so it is generating an output clock. So if I connect a wire from 555 out to one of the LEDs, it just looks like it's always on because it's so fast. So I'm going to reconnect the 555 out to the clock in on the binary counter. Then I'll take the LED and put it on different outputs of the counter. Now it's blinking at a visible rate. As we go along the counter, the pulses slow down. And we can see how we have multiple oscillator clock frequencies available. So now we have two different slow moving pulses going on two of these LEDs, and they're going into a NAND gate. The output of the NAND gate is going into the green first LED. And there's the concept of doing that. If we ignore for now some of these things, if we just look at the 555 sending an output clock into the binary counter, then we have two different Q outputs giving different clock rates. We go to the input of a NAND gate, and we're looking at the output. So input 1 is a certain slow clock. Input 2 to the gate is a faster clock. The output, based on the truth table of a NAND gate, will give us some certain new waveform, not exactly like either of the two going in. If we take a signal that's going from high to low, if we use it 
in an RC filter, we can take basically a square wave in and turn it into a triangle wave, charging the capacitor, giving a voltage rising and falling instead of just going on off. And that's going to go to the 555 control voltage. So we can slide the frequency of the 555 up and down at whatever rate based on the pulse rate or the resistor or capacitor value. So then we can do even more interesting changes to the final frequency of our circuit. The 1K is connected up to the slowest Q11 binary counter output. So if I take a wire and connect it from the RC filter at the junction of resistor capacitor, connect that over to the 555 control voltage in, we're going to get a ramping up and down waveform and it's going to momentarily increase and decrease the overall clock rate. So now we can see we have two different speeds going on. We have a slower counting and then it'll momentarily speed up and go through several pulses. Then it will slow down again. Now with the LEDs removed, I've hooked up a speaker with this amplifier. So now we can just have a tone coming out of one of the binary counter outputs going to the jack, going to the speaker. And I can move that wire along to hear the pitch gradually decreasing one octave at a time. And I can change the potentiometer to change the pitch when it's on a certain counter output. And to make the sounds more interesting, now we can add a resistor capacitor charge discharge network onto the 555 control voltage input. So we take one of the outputs of the binary counter, use it to charge and discharge the capacitor, which causes the frequency of the 555 to modulate up and down, which impacts the overall sound. Right now, I have the AD5242 1 meg digital pot hooked up to the 555 instead of this separate 1 meg pot to automatically use the Arduino over I squared C to control the pitch of the main frequency. There's an audio jack here to go to the amplifier for the final audio output. And here is the 16 by 16 analog matrix with the 555 oscillator coming to it, connections for four NAND gates, both inputs and outputs. And the binary counter has its clock input connected to the matrix and four various Q binary counter outputs are connected to the matrix. So instead of using jumper wires to make dedicated connections to say, take the 555 clock, put it into the counter, then generate a bunch of those outputs, put them through gates and make a sound effect. Now all of that is in the matrix and the UNO over I squared C is configuring all the inputs and outputs on this matrix to wire things up and disconnect and reconfigure on the fly. Also down here just off screen, there's a couple of audio jacks which have a patch cable directly shorting them. So it's not really doing anything, it's for further experimenting. But that's basically an external send and return. If I wanted to take the audio, send it out to yet another circuit or effect, process it and bring it back into the matrix. So for now, I'm not using that. So this is 
roughly what's going on. We have our 16 by 16 matrix, so x0 through x15, and then going vertically, y0 through y15. So in that matrix, if I want to make a connection between any two signals going on here, I just have to configure the matrix to close a switch contact that intersects where I'd like to make connections. For example, here's the 555. Here's a digital pot I have hooked up. Here's the resistor capacitor on the control voltage pin. So to get started, let's say I've got this 555 output and I want it to clock the binary counter. So I have to get this output connected to the clock input. The output is down here on Y10. The binary counter clock input is on X3. So Y10 intersects with X3 over here. So I would tell the Arduino sketch to close this junction in the matrix and suddenly the 555 output is running to the clock input. Likewise, now I have a bunch of Q outputs at different frequencies coming into the matrix. So let's say I want to take this output, send it to one of these inputs on this NAND gate. I would make a connection in the matrix right here, and now this Q11 is connected over to the first input on the NAND gate. Then I take another signal, put it on the other NAND gate input. The output is coming here, so I can now bridge that. Let's say that's all I want to do. I bridge a connection on this X15 down with Y15, because that's where the output goes to the amplifier. So here, FX1 and FX2, those are just external jacks, so I can send audio out and then bring audio back in after processing. That's what those two jacks there are for. And here's a couple of examples I'm configuring in the sketch. So up here, if I take a couple of Q outputs from the binary counter, we're going to have a faster train of pulses and a slower train of pulses. And putting it through a NAND gate, what we end up doing is really allowing this higher frequency set of pulses to momentarily go generate a tone. But then, as this other slower signal goes high and low, we're basically enabling or disabling a tone burst. In this next case, what I'm doing is similar to this. I'm turning a certain frequency tone on periodically, but doing it this way, I'm also taking another tone at a different frequency and turning it on opposite to the first one, because I'm using an inverter here to enable the tone at the opposite time as the first gate is enabling. So I'm getting a certain tone frequency, then it's switching to the second tone frequency, and then it goes back and forth, sort of like a two-tone siren. And in the case where I want to modulate the frequency on the 555 with the control voltage input, I can say take a Q11 output, so it's going to slowly charge and then slowly discharge this capacitor, and what we get is our 555 frequency sliding slightly off of the base frequency set by the potentiometer. So for example, if we're generating these two tones at a certain frequency, if we then do this, we manipulate the frequency of the 555 slightly up or down, so these two tones will get slightly higher in pitch, slightly lower in pitch, and it could become interesting. So I'm going to power this up. Thank <laughs> you. 